I just wanted to say that, that uh, you know, just from my heart, I, you know, like I said, we, we don't really talk, you know, so this is this is hard for me. So I had to sit down and, and write something down to do justice to my profession and uh, the people I work with. Yeah. We are all multidimensional beings of limitless potential. The people with whom I've had the pleasure of conspiring to invent this night are no exceptions. All have taken on roles showcasing the unique and diversified gifts that necessarily must come into play to manifest a vision like the one surrounding you tonight. All have poured their hearts into this effort in hopes that it will help elevate the inner conversation and those who experience it. And I do see a contingent of LA's top models here tonight, and I salute you. I appreciate your presence. <laughs> if you like standing, please, please My husband. <laughs> I see it, and then there's also uh, you know, our artist teacher uh, collaborators. And, and we are codependents in the very best sense of the word. <laughs> that bond of mutual need fuels and fires the teacher model student trinity. On behalf of us models, thank you for the care and concern you lavish on us, always making sure we know we are golden to you. If any of you teachers want to stand for a moment, please do. Please do. Please stand. Oh my. We are also greatly blessed tonight with the presence of an LA modeling legend. A key figure in in, in figure history, she is known and cherished by, by us all. Following years active in modeling, she moved on to become the model coordinator at Art Center College. She held benevolent court there for decades. <laughs> she had the power to supercharge the career of any fledgling model she sensed worthy and I know because it happened to me. Of course, I'm talking about Nancy Lilly. Nancy, we welcome you. We honor you for everything you've done for us and everything you are to us. You are the godmother of us all, Nancy. And we just thank you. Thank you, Nancy. God bless you. We love you. And it's only proper to continue by invoking the man responsible for bringing us all together tonight. And that's the spirit of the model's patron saint, the international cause celeb, and local legend, Antonio Corsi. Right here. <laughs> Say hi, Antonio. <laughs> In the early 20th century, Corsi was like a one-man golden age of models, the star of his times. He embodied the Renaissance man, collaborating with artists, greats, and the creation of timeless art both here and across Europe. He even dipped his toes in that Hollywood upstart moving pictures. <laughs> After his untimely passing in 1924, at age 55, in Eagle Rock, it seems a sort of model dark ages said. Models became the poor stepchild of the fine arts hierarchy, overlooked, underpaid, <laughs> unheralded by society at large. Now, however, all that's beginning to change. Folks are waking up to the cultural significance of the role we play, that we've always played. As evidenced by your presence here tonight and the recent rise in model themes in books and on film. Almost a century after his passing, Corsi is back. 
The power of his narrative attracted a circle of art lovers and historians to set the record straight, do justice to his legacy. The model's artist is a direct result of that joining of forces, as is the upcoming feature documentary, Corsi, Prince of Models. My admiration for the timely vision of filmmaker Jake Gorst, Tracy Gorst, and producers Charles and Tina Miller knows no bounds. This whole project is a bona fide labor of love. And Jenny and I are delighted to be caught up by your gorgeous moving pictures. I think they're actually called talkies now. <laughs> <laughs> These days, when someone says model, that usually springs to mind commercial models. Not surprising since the print and electronic media assures these images get seen by millions daily. When you think of it, however, artist models are the real models, the OG models. <laughs> We're the ones whose lineage stretches back hundreds of years. Our work by nature appreciates over time. <laughs> <laughs> not relegated to hamster cages or upstaged by the next big ad campaign. <laughs> Rather than reinforce stereotypes, we exist as models of diversity. Yeah. Our ranks celebrate the Homo sapiens in all its glorious and infinite permutations. <laughs> Nowhere is sheer egalitarianism as evident than within our subculture. We are the standard bearers. We are the silent witnesses to the truth, a body as sacred space. Our very existence quietly counters the prevailing mindset of body as profane, stupid, crude, and sin laden Visibility-wise, we work behind the scenes, and mostly out of view. We're found behind gates, behind guards, and behind do not enter signs. People pay for the privilege. <laughs> Our images, far from mass-produced and consumed, are rather handcrafted, one at a time. The attention we do get is hard won, the result of years and years of showing up, performing live to small groups over and over and over again. In LA, we drive ridiculous thousands of miles a year to make our gigs, literally. All that's out of our pockets too, but that's the givens and we accept that. We are sustained by the spontaneous applause and the respect we see in our artist and students' eyes. These shows of appreciation assure us continually that our contribution still counts, that our best efforts are far from in vain. Definitely worth the trip. <laughs> Subsistence level income does not prevent models from living rich. Money has its place. However, to paraphrase Lao Tzu, once we feel we have enough, then we are rich. Countertypes, we models find other ways to thrive apart from merely acquiring consumer power. For us, it's wealth in feeling. The richness found in unique, empowering, enlightening experiences. It's in the knowing that with every pose, every gesture, we stand as living representatives of all mankind, past, present, and to come. It's being free, open, and ready for the unexpected the extraordinary to appear at any time. 
and does by tonight. Ours is also the priceless wealth of owning our lives and being the ones to call our own shots. There's richness in opportunities to collaborate with teachers of brilliance, depth, and humanity. The model's contributions are acknowledged and valued in the academic world. Together, we serve as inspiration for new generations of artists. Our stillness spawns action that swirls around us, expanding the breadth and scope of art in new directions. One could say we models are paid to meditate, <laughs> to spontaneously create, to challenge our limits, to elevate the conversation wordlessly. Some even refer to us by the M word, use. <laughs> we trigger the inner dialogue. We see the artist darting hungry eyes, ever grasping to commit something real and honest and true. Lifetime achievement. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty heady, heady stuff. An honor humbling, yet bewildering. It makes more sense seeing myself as a stand-in for all art models, selfless and sharing their essence in studios and classrooms near and far. It also signals the emerging awareness of the significance of our historical contribution to art and culture in general. At 16 years in, I think myself just getting my model steam up, earning my chops, the late blooming boomer. <laughs> I'm sure my siblings here, Brother Steve and Sister Mary Kay <laughs> and Sister Anne, they would agree that my greatest achievement really comes down to I'm still fucking alive. <laughs> I learned the hard way that visions and revelations of a freshly psychedelicized young mind had no welcome place in a society bound by war and acquisition. The draft, the war on drugs, the homophobic fever, all seemed tailor-made to annihilate people of my ilk. The lust of innocence succumbing to decades of this brutal, dominating mindset is long tragic. So what in fact are the achievements that led me here tonight? Most obviously it's my years modeling in general and my work with Jenya specifically. But my story previous to that I feel is equally relevant and telling. I'm not here because I played ball <laughs> or because I conformed. Seen through the lens of so-called traditional American values, the man before you stands or sits as an unqualified, abysmal failure, a total loser with no perceived redeeming value. I sport no assets, no property, no spouse, no children. I've never owned a credit card. Never had health insurance or anything resembling a disposable income. Well, I forgot what getting laid is like. Rather, I have lived alone most of my adult life, figuring ways to balance the delicate dance, pitting worldly responsibility and spiritual integrity, sensing myself every moment one stranger in a very strange land. I came up in times when it was open season on flower children like me, attacked by priests, betrayed by peers, jailed by cops, threatened by warmongers. What's a hippie love and peace thing to do to survive but go underground, guising myself in a life no one else would possibly want or feel threatened by? So, in a broader sense, this too is a crucial achievement. 
in a life laid bare for you here tonight. In a society plagued by body shame and degradation, artful nudity offered the perfect fit for my subversive deviance. <laughs> here, the body's elegant truth laid bare could counter the prevailing dirty lies. But that's another movie. <laughs> If it please you, I would like to relate one early March anecdote, a Snyder family classic. <laughs> it accurately sets the tone for what was in store for me. It was, it was, I was two in 52, and we lived in Ellensburg, Washington. You know what's coming. <laughs> Mom was busy upstairs, and I managed to get busy myself by climbing onto the kitchen stove and turning all the burners up to high. What next? Well, I sat down right on top of a red hot burner, of course. What next? Well, just then big brother Steve, who was five, came into the kitchen just in time to see me start to smoke. He ran out of the kitchen screaming, Mama! Mama, Marky's on fire, Marky's on fire. <laughs> Mom rushed through, went down and she yanked me free. It burned right through my rubber pants and into the diapers. <laughs> Mom saved my ass that day, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Fortunately, the diapers were wet too, so uh, that formed a protective barrier between me and a roast butt. So anyway, I am the product of the commingling of DNA from Northern and Southern Europe via the Smoothing Iron Ranch in Eastern Washington and Potlatch, Idaho. My beloved parents, Joe and Bernie Snyder, met at a freshman mixer at the University of Idaho, and boy, did they mix. <laughs> a world war, and 10 kids later, the 60s hit. Enough said. We Burmers defined and refined the meaning of generation gap. The Snyders survived, however, and thrived. Looking back, our houseful reflected a microcosm of our turbulent times. All the stories were there a panoply of American diversity, complete with its soaring ups and crashing downs. I carry my parents' legacy in a special way. That country DNA that found its way to LA blessed me with my father's big gnarly hands <laughs> and, and my mother's swooping arches and all the other features that helped me pay the rent and continue to live in dignity. So thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> My adventures in, in modeling was never a goal unto itself. For me, it's part of a larger journey dominating my life. Over time, with little else to call mine, I came to see the value of one thing I did have at my disposal, my own precious body. I came to see a universe within it, the next frontier, worlds awaiting discovery. And it was fully portable. <laughs> Never one for the well-worn path. In the body, I found my own way of radical subversion, of needed inner healing. I channeled the love and care, supposedly reserved only for others, into my own body. Gasp. <laughs> I hope that over time, I'd find ways to coax out secrets I and others could use to enhance life with powerful therapeutic tools for prevention, maintenance, and natural healing of the sacred body. Call it practical love.
Love is, after all, the force that creates and sustains the all that is. That wimpy moon June spoon contrivance is so over. The love I'm talking about takes names and kicks ass. Holistically, of course. <laughs> so anyway, I, I've spent years alone, thousands of solitary hours, forming this concept of exercise as active meditation, one that balances, strengthens, and energizes the whole system, inside and out. It's about harnessing primal forces to forge the form as a sculptor would lovingly with wood and clay. So when you see my rendered image, what you are actually seeing is a work of art of a work of art. Outwardly, the practice takes the form of weightless, yoga-inspired movements in warm water. Inwardly, the process unites the upper and lower brains, the masculine thinking brain, and the feminine feeling brain, the seed of intuition. The loss of this interconnection is at the root of human suffering, I believe. And practical love serves the purpose of this reunion of opposites. Homeostatic integrity is the new game in town. Corporate fitness had its day, but lost its way. In the future, anybody will be able to begin a self-ministry and witness the laws of physics refining us into the bodies we'll need to face the future. What, one may ask, does any of this have to do with modeling? In my mind, the chances of introducing a daily practice able to successfully challenge the fitness model was as improbable as a middle-aged man coming into demand for his physique in body-centric LA. The modeling became a way for me to put my proto-body experiments to work in the field, as it were, anonymously. No one knew what I'd been, really been up to, what was driving my passion. What mattered was that I left everyone happy. Modeling gave me the objective experience needed to see that I was, in fact, beating the odds, excelling in a tough, tight art world subculture. 16 years and a few thousand gigs later, recently an official senior citizen, <laughs> here I am coming out to you, revealing my hidden side. I'm 65 going on 30, living in a bachelor pad, dancing my fucking ass off at the drop of a pounding rhythm, and still expecting Mr. Dreamboat to sail up my harbor any day now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for bearing with me, and please enjoy the rest of this fabulous night. Compliments of the hard work and vision of the show's curator, Katie Pulse. <laughs> and my new friend, Norm, <laughs> and the staff of the LA LGBT Center. Thank you, Brother Evan Hatfield, for your magic sitar, and Sean. My dearest friend, Alma Cielo. <laughs> you, who acting on your own tuition, opened the door that led directly to this night. Thank you. <laughs> and Daniel, words fall short to express the power of the body we share. Choosing me as your partner in art has changed my life giving space and validation and vindication to my wildest fantasies. <laughs> you are incomparable, and with your grace, I get to have a little taste of that too. So.
wanted to say that in spirit of collaboration, I'm not going to make you sit too long, uh, but I did wanted to say thank you to my parents who should remain standing. Um, they're the reason that uh, any of this happened. Not just by loving each other and giving birth to me, but countless hours of acupuncture by my mom, <laughs> my loving husband, and of course my dear Nika, my daughter. <laughs> Uh, John Slipko is a co-founder of Project A. Tonight is a collaboration between Project A and RGBT. So John, can you please stand up? <laughs> and also a, a fearless friend who is also a fantastic supporter and promoter of anything a great artist does in LA. And she started a beautiful business called Artworks 411. So to Elizabeth Yoakum. <laughs> Um, and maybe Nika can come up on stage with me for just yeah. a second. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so as you can see, um, I'm learning a lot from her. You can see that in the film. And two nights ago, I was very nervous and very excited about tonight. And I felt that it was going to be very special, which thank you so much for making that so. And somehow we started talking about dinosaurs. And then Nika reminded me that dinosaurs came about, do you guys know how far away? 60 million, 55? 65, 65 million year, years ago. And I, we, she was about to go to sleep. We were in the dark in her bedroom. And I started feeling really tiny. <laughs> and our event started to shrink. And they said, Nika, I'm feeling very depressed. She said, why? I said, well, if you take the scale, how can I explain this to a child? You take the scale and you put 65, year, 65 million years of dinosaurs, and then tonight. <laughs> and she said, well, I said, our tool land 60 million years ago, so this will be the 60 million years. This will be the art, because where art means magic, is that contains all 60 million years and that makes it even more powerful. Wow. Wow. So we invite you back to complete the exhibition. This is our moment together to be in that little speck of time with art. So please enjoy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.